guess what? I'm Gen Z and I don't hate myself. I actually quite like my generation. I like the people my age. I like the unity we have together. I like the struggles we go through. Millennials and Gen Z never be able to buy Teen suicide rate has surged by nearly 40%. I can look at someone else in their early 20s and take a pretty good guess that they are feeling the same things I'm feeling. This deep and intense search for meaning in a culture devoid of truth, of purpose, of anything. See, the thing is, you can have power or you can have meaning, but you can't have both. Where people used to give up all of their power, their will to power, their individual will for the glory of God, the glory of religion and kingdom, or whatever higher purpose they look towards. We've done away with that and now any one of us has the opportunity to seize vast amounts of power, power that no peasant could ever imagine having. But we have no meaning, we have no purpose, we have no inherent purpose to do so. What god are you answering to? Now take this meaninglessness, combine it with rampant individualism as a search for power and a search for meaning, and put the whole thing online, and you're left with the most extreme generation to ever exist. As Generation Z reconstructs meaning and reconstructs purpose from the ground up, they are led by three guiding ideologies, and and understanding what these concepts are will help you to understand the culture at large. Part 1. Nihilism. As it is experienced, the actual existential sense of the meaningless and futility of life is not the product of an intellectual theory. Viktor Frankl wrote this to explain that, contrary of how you may feel, existential dread is a product of your environment and your scenario. It's not like you can just one day think the wrong thought and then be envy for the rest of your life. That's not the case. It's all environmental. It's all mental health. Realizing the insignificance and meaninglessness of one's life could be soul crushing for one person to realize, while someone else could take those same realizations and, and have it produce a profound sense of freedom. These two types of nihilism are called active and passive nihilism. Now I know nihilism isn't a new concept to anybody watching this video. Just to say that Gen Z is nihilistic doesn't tell the full story. And when you look at the meme of the doomer and the bloomer, that's the difference that those memes are riffing on. They're really important to understand, especially active nihilism. Active nihilism and the way it uses the meaninglessness of life as a vessel for action is the foundation for the next two concepts I'm about to explain. Part two. Optimization. The human brain hasn't evolved past when we were hunter-gatherers. That's still what we are. We're not city dwellers. We're not modern creatures. The human brain can only maintain 200 close relationships. Past that, things start to fray. That's all we're built to do. That was the size of your hierarchy, and that was the size of the pool you were competing with. And as our hierarchy continues to expand globally via the internet, things have started to get a little strange. Because like, okay, 50 years ago, if you lived in an average sized town and you wanted to be top of your game, you want to be a top 5% high value person. What do you do? You get a good job, you save a bit of money, you get a good house, you get a nice car, you eat healthy, you take care of yourself. Normal things. Normal things that almost everybody I know does now. Your hierarchy was your town. You weren't competing with random people on the fucking internet. The amount of young men looking at Andrew Tate were like, that's the top of their hierarchy, that's where they're going. That's never happened before. Our hierarchy growing this big has made Gen Z hyper competitive. But the reason I say optimization and not competitiveness is because it goes deeper than that. As we get more competitive, people become more and more scared to fail because it will set them back, and they avoid the process of trial and error with this obsession of getting things right the first time through optimization. Let's explain this by talking about the weightlifting community. If you don't exercise and then you start exercising, you've improved your life. Simple as that. But what if you could exercise better? If you knew that you could exercise better, the way you currently exercise just wouldn't cut it anymore. It's like leaving money on the table. What's the point of lifting weights if you're not consuming the proper amount of macros? And then what's the point of consuming the perfect amount of macronutrients if you're not lifting optimal? What if you implemented carb cycles? Low impact cardio for recovery. You mean you're not f***ing taking turkestero? Creatine, magnesium, zinc. You're not sleeping seven hours and 45 minutes a night. PPL. Four by 10 at 86% of your Because you're not gonna do it perfectly the first time. You should just and kill yourself. This is what I mean by optimization. You can expand this line of thinking to every trial in life. The optimization and obsession with facial aesthetics and symmetry has created the black pill ideology. Optimized and results oriented practices in the arts has created the lowest common denominator of pop music and visual art. We have so much accumulated knowledge and so many examples of successful people that life is becoming like a video game with one broken build. Part three, primitivism. In historian Jacques Brazun's 
final book from Dawn to Decadence. He outlines the history of Western culture from the Renaissance to the year 2000. He makes a point of going back to key concepts that reoccur throughout Western history. Things like individualism and emancipation have been guiding ideologies for a lot of Western history. But the one I want to focus on is primitivism. Primitivism is an apolitical ideology that is the search for a more primitive and authentic way of life, more true to human nature. Every ideology, political theory, and cultural movement is a search for a way of life more fulfilling than the status quo. Fascism makes the claim that inequality and power as an end in itself is more true to human nature than liberalism. Communism makes the claim that complete equality to the point where the individual is worth less than the group is more true to human nature than capitalism. Whether you like it or not, if you're in your early 20s, late teens, and you've managed to escape the passive nihilist camp, you are part of this search as well. We know that authenticity is the answer, but we don't know the right question to ask, and our narratives are our expression of that question. This sort of radical dissatisfaction is what defines Gen Z. It's all a search for purity. It's all a search for authenticity. This is why in the beginning I said that I love my generation, that I feel connected with them. I can promise you, no matter what you believe in, you have more in common with someone who radically opposes your views than you do with any apolitical person. The thing is that we're still too young to make a difference in the way things are run. As young people, we have a monopoly on contemporary culture. Culture is created for us to consume. Music, art, fashion, movies, television, everything is made for our generation. We own culture, but we have yet to own the modes of cultural production. And in a way, we're in the exact same spot that the boomers were in the late 60s. The boomers all took part in social justice movements and were very politically active in the late 60s. What did the boomers do after the 60s? They all grew up, joined the workforce, went to Wall Street, and gained control of the modes of cultural production. And now, boomers own 50% of all the property in the US. Go tomorrow to your university lecture and look at the vaguely reactionary conservative guy beside you and say, hey man, I know we disagree, but I know we're just both trying to figure this thing out. Let's get a drink. Let's shoot the shit. I guarantee you, you'll be good friends. Also, never kill yourself. Never kill yourself. Axiom, wake up every day, say I'm not going to kill myself. Get it so ingrained in your head that it is as inconceivable as growing a ninth arm. Killing yourself is f***ing cringe as hell.